All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning, I am Sanjay Mattu. The headlines. Government convenes all party meeting today to ensure smooth transaction of business in budget session of parliament. In Assam, cadres of all four factions of National Democratic Front of Bodoland to lay down arms in Guwahati. European Parliament approves Brexit deal with Britain, paving way for UK's departure from the European Union. Nation pays homage to father of the nation Mahatma Gandhi on his 72nd death anniversary today. And in Australian Open tennis, Rohan Bopanna and his Ukrainian partner Nadia Kichenok to play their mixed doubles quarterfinals in Melbourne. The budget session of Parliament will begin tomorrow. The government has convened an all-party meeting today to ensure smooth transaction of business in both houses of Parliament. More from our correspondent. An all-party meeting has also been convened by the Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla today. During the meeting, the Speaker will seek the support of different political parties for the smooth conduct of business in the lower house. Rajya Sabha Chairman M. Venkaya Naidu is also scheduled to hold an all-party meeting tomorrow. The first phase of the budget session will begin with President Ramnath Kovind's address to the joint session of both the houses. The economic survey will also be tabled tomorrow and the budget will be presented on Saturday. Saturday. The session will continue till 11th of next month. After a recess of nearly one month, the session will resume from 2nd of March and will go on till 3rd of April. With Deependra Kumar's report, Tanvi Kurana, AIR News. On the eve of the session today, the New Services Division of All India Radio will bring you discussion programs, Issues Before Parliament and Sansad Ke Samaksh Mudde. The Issues Before Parliament program can be heard on FM Gold from 7.10 p.m. to 7.40 p.m. and the Rajdhani channel from 9.30 p.m. Sansat Ke Samaksh Mudde can be heard on the Indraprasth and FM Gold channels from 9.30 p.m. In Assam, cadres of all the four factions of the National Democratic Front of Bodoland or NDFB will lay down arms in Guwahati today. NDFB signed a tripartite peace treaty with the Centre and the Assam government recently in New Delhi. Chief Minister Sadbanan Sonowal and Finance Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma will attend the ceremony. As per the peace accord, a 1500 crore rupee financial package in the next three years will be given for the development of the Bodoland territorial region. More from our correspondent. The recently signed tripartite pact was the third Bodo Accord signed in the last 27 years. The violent movement for a separate Bodoland state took hundreds of lives. The first Bodo Accord was signed with the All Bodo Students Union, APSU, and Bodo People's Action Committee in 1993. In 2003, the second Bodo Accord was signed with the militant outfit Bodo Liberation Tigers, leading to the formation of the Bodoland Territorial Council, BTC, consisting of four districts. The Assam government has assured that the new treaty would not hamper the interest of the non-Bodo people staying in the BTC area. Manas Patim Sarma, AR News, Guwahati. The European Parliament has decided not to conduct a vote today on a resolution against India's new citizenship law. Government sources call the deferment of the voting on the Citizenship Amendment Act, or CAA, a diplomatic victory. They said that Friends of India prevailed over the Friends of Pakistan in the European Parliament. India reached out to almost all the countries of the powerful bloc, trying to persuade them against going ahead with the resolution against the CAA. Lok Sabha Speaker Om Bidla had written to European Parliament President David Maria Sassoli over the resolutions moved against the CAA. The National Human Rights Commission, NHRC, is organizing a meeting of a statutory full commission in New Delhi today. NHRC Chairperson Justice H.L. Dattu will chair the meeting. The meeting has been called for the discharge of functions towards promotion and protection of human rights as specified in the statutory clauses of Section 12 of the Protection of Human Rights, or PHR Act. The meeting gathers significance, as it's been called for the first time since the recent amendment in the PHR Act, adding chairpersons of the National Commission for Backward Classes, the National Commission for Protection of Child Rights, and the Chief Commissioner for Persons with Disabilities as the de new deemed members of the NHRC. In China, the death toll in the coronavirus outbreak has risen to 170. 
Chinese Premier Li Qiang has said that China will make targeted efforts to strengthen the prevention and control of the novel coronavirus outbreak. More from our correspondent. Since WHO's last week's meeting, many cases where the infected individual had not traveled to China had emerged, which has caused concern of human-to-human transmission outside China. Entire China is now affected and the number of cases of the new coronavirus has surpassed the total for SARS, severe acute respiratory syndrome in the mainland China 17 years ago. As China is battling with this crisis and health workers overstretching beyond capacity, Hubei governor has said that there is currently a severe shortage of medical supplies not just in Wuhan, but in surrounding cities as well. He urged the companies to shut their offices at least till February 14. Hubei governor says the situation is particularly severe in neighboring Hong Kong city and vowed to prevent it from becoming the second Wuhan. Anshman Mishra, Prasad Bharti, Beijing. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization, WHO, has convened an emergency meeting today over the deadly coronavirus outbreak in China. The Emergency Committee on the Novel Coronavirus under the international health regulations will meet in Geneva. The committee will advise the Director General on whether the outbreak constitutes a public health emergency of international concern, or PHEIC, and what recommendations should be made to manage it. India has requested China for permission to operate two flights to bring back Indian nationals from Hubei province of China. MEA spokesperson Ravish Kumar said the Indian embassy in Beijing is in touch with Chinese authorities on the ground to work out the necessary logistics. The Union Health Ministry has urged people to refrain from traveling to China in view of the outbreak of the coronavirus. It has also advised all the travelers from China to monitor their health closely. The ministry also reviewed the preparedness for prevention and management of the novel coronavirus in the country with states and union territories. A 24-7 call center was active for responding to queries on the virus. The number is 011-2397-8046. Health Minister Dr. Hashwadhan has said not even a single case has been detected in the country. The Health Minister said 27 samples sent to the National Institute of Virology, Pune, for testing of novel coronavirus have tested negative. कोरोना वायरस का कोई एक भी केस हमारे भारत के अंदर अभी नहीं है लेकिन बहुत सारे मीडिया में चैनल्स इसको इस तरह से लिख रहे हैं इस तरह से बता रहे हैं कोई अगर टेस्टिंग के लिए भी अगर आइसोलेट किया जाता है तो उसको भी वो कोरोना वायरस आ गया है इस तरह से कृपया मत कहिए मत लिखिए इसमें कोई फैक्चुअली सच्चाई नहीं है Talking to AIR News, Dr. A.K. Varshini of the RML Hospital Delhi spoke about the symptoms of the novel coronavirus symptom is just like a common cold which most of us have this virus from the upper respiratory tract what we known as the nose nose or pharynx it percolates down to the lungs and then it causes the bilateral pneumonia and then patient may become serious because oxygen level goes down patient is hypoxia and they will require the ventilatory support to maintain the oxygen level tamil nadu health secretary bila rajesh has said Chennai, Madurai, Coimbatore and Trichy airports have established special centers to screen the international passengers who come from the affected countries including China. Telangana Health Minister Etela Rajinder said that isolated special units with a total capacity of 100 beds have been set up at hospitals in Hyderabad. In West Bengal, special health checkup camps are being organized for sailors and other workers of foreign ships that are coming into Haldia and Kolkata port. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. The European Parliament has voted overwhelmingly to approve the Brexit deal with London, clearing the final hurdle for Britain's departure from the EU. The vote was 621 to 49 in favour of the Brexit deal that British Prime Minister Boris Johnson negotiated with other EU leaders. After Britain's departure at 11pm London time tomorrow, the UK will remain within the EU's economic arrangements until the end of the year. However, the UK will not have any say in policy as it will not be a member of the EU anymore. Back home, the nation pays homage to the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi, on his 72nd death anniversary today. It was on this day in 1948 that Mahatma Gandhi fell to the bullet of his assassin. The day is also observed as Martyr's Day. A Sarva Dharma Pratna Sabha has been organized at his Samadhi Rajghat in the national capital.
All India Radio Delhi will broadcast a live commentary on the Sarva Dharma Prathna Sabha and Bhakti Sangeet from Rajkhat. It can be heard on the Rajdhani channel from 9.40 a.m. Various programs are being organized in Gujarat as part of the 72nd death anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi, a report from our correspondent. All press meet has been organized at Sabarmati Ashram in Ahmedabad and Kirti Mandir in Porbandar at the birthplace of Mahatma Gandhi. Noted historian Sudhir Chandra will deliver a lecture on Gandhi, V and Today at Sabarmati Ashram in Ahmedabad and senior historian Ramchandra Guha is also in Ahmedabad to address on Gandhi's vision and how we connect it with today's India. Apoyna Khun, AI News, Ahmedabad. Moving on to our Budget 2020-21 series. The Union Budget for the upcoming financial year is scheduled to be presented on the 1st of February. With only two days left for the Budget to come, people have many expectations from the Budget. Our Ranchi correspondent spoke to people on their expectations. खाने का सामान काफी महंगा होते जा रहा है प्याज भी काफी महंगा है तो ये सब खाने पीने के सामान में तो दाम में कमी होनी ही चाहिए एलपीजी सिलेंडर भी काफी महंगा है जिससे कि आम गृहिणी का बजट सब बिगड़ जाता है तो उस पर भी सरकार को ध्यान देना है सरकार जहां कैशलेस पे इंफेसिस दे रही है जोर दे रही है तो सरकार को कैशलेस की ओर स्वेपिंग में चार्जेस जीरो कर देना चाहिए और जहां इन्वेस्टमेंट में इंश्योरेंस वगैरह में जीएसटी अट्ठारह सरकार ले रही है वो भी जीएसटी को सरलीकरण करने की दरकार है Basant Manchmi and Saraswati Puja are being celebrated in different parts of the country today with religious fervor and traditional gaiety. Vice President M. Venkaiya Naidu has greeted the people on the auspicious occasion of Basant Panchmi. In a tweet, Mr. Naidu said, the worship of Goddess Saraswati signifies the resolve to achieve wisdom from ignorance. The festival is being celebrated in Uttar Pradesh with religious fervor. In the Australian Open tennis tournament today, Rohan Bopanna and Nadia Kichinok of Ukraine will take on Croatian Nikola Mektic and Barbora Krejcikova of the Czech Republic in the mixed doubles quarterfinals at Melbourne. In men's singles, the first semi-final will be played today between Swiss Roger Federer and the Serb Novak Djokovic. In the women's singles semi-finals, Simona Halep and Garbine Muguruza will also clash today. Yesterday, world number one Rafael Nadal crashed out to the fifth seed Dominic Thiem. The day two of the spectacular film extravaganza of MIFF 2020 unfolded several interesting aspects for the cine fields. The week-long festival was inaugurated on Tuesday at Nehru Center Auditorium in Mumbai. And now for a look at today's newspapers for the major stories, it's over to BC Pramod. Thank you, Sanjay. Plans to deal with the coronavirus outbreak dominate front-page headlines. The Indian Express reports exit from China, government plans two flights, 28-day isolation in Delhi. The front-page lead in the Tribune states, CAA NRC toll, Kishore Verma expelled from JDU, two killed in Bengal clash. Highlighting a significant cabinet decision, the Asian Age writes, government hikes abortion limit to 24 weeks in key cases. On the Election Commission decision regarding Union Minister of State for Finance Anurag Thakur and BJP MP Parvesh Verma ahead of the Delhi Assembly polls, the Hindu states Anurag Parvesh out of BJP star campaigners list. And finally, make of it what you will. The Tribune carries a report on the Women's Helpline 181 in Haryana saying over 70% calls to women helpline made by men. With that, it's back to you, Sanjay. Thank you, Pramod. That was a look at today's newspapers for the major stories. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Government convenes all party meeting today to ensure smooth transaction of business in budget session of parliament. In Assam, cadres of all four factions of National Democratic Front of Bodoland to lay down arms in Guwahati. European Parliament approves Brexit deal with Britain, paving way for UK's departure from the European Union. Nation pays homage to Father of the Nation Mahatma Gandhi on his 72nd death anniversary today. And in Australian Open Tennis, Rohan Bopanna and his Ukrainian partner Nadia Kichinok to play their mixed doubles quarterfinals in Melbourne. And for details of these stories and more, log on to our website, newsonair.com. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.